Hello, Alberts Liston. Welcome. We hope again that you're having a safe week out there amid the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. We welcome you to this webinar and appreciate you being flexible as usual with all the technology challenges of today. We already know it. LinkedIn is one of the most important technology platforms for finding your next job. But how do you use it in times of crisis, especially with a high unemployment rate? We saw that Lyft and Uber are both laying off a ton of people, and so the market just continues to keep on getting saturated. Optimizing your LinkedIn profile is the best way to go in terms of getting noticed by recruiters and hiring managers. Beyond just having a profile picture and a bio, there are many ways to get seen, and we brought in Oscar Garcia, founder and chief empowerment officer of Aspira Consulting, a Silicon Valley training and consulting firm focused on helping professionals get hired and succeed. He's been at a lot of different events, and I've also had the opportunity to speak with him on a panel. He's an introvert turned international speaker. Oscar has over 300 seminars and trained over 10,000 professionals in his time of work. His clients range from startup incubators to educational institutos and brands like Aruba Networks, Palo Alto Networks, McKesson, Genentech, Wells Fargo, the U.S. Embassy, the University of California, Berkeley, and Stanford University. As Chief Empowerment Officer, Oscar empowers you, so opportunities come to you. And there's no one else that I look to when it comes to things related to LinkedIn. So welcome, Oscar. I'm really happy to have you here, and I think we need you more than ever in these economic times. <laughs> Thank you, Albert. Thank you for, for having me here. Um, you know, I was thinking back, uh, the first time that you and I met uh, was uh, a talk that we did for the um, uh, Public Libraries like Conference Association in San Francisco. Remember that? I think it was like maybe like five, six years ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, you and I sat on a panel, and I think I talked about online communities, and you talked about LinkedIn, and LinkedIn. it was a great time. It was really cool. That video is still on YouTube too. <laughs> yes, it's still there. But uh, thank you for having me here. I love yeah. what you guys uh, are doing with Albert's List, and you know, really more than ever, uh, helping people out right now um, find their 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 next opportunity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and. Uh, like I said, I'm really happy to have you here too, because um, there aren't that many people I look to when it comes to LinkedIn related topics. And I think every time I see a LinkedIn, uh, a LinkedIn, um, a LinkedIn related event, uh, you are the headline speaker there. And so uh, if folks who haven't met you already, uh, they get to meet you tonight. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and let you get started and um, let me know, let me know if you need me. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Well, you know what? So um, I got to tell you, I uh, I used to work in the tech industry and um, they're um, for startups. And back in the late uh, uh, 90s, going into 2000, Monster.com and some of these other uh, uh, organizations came about. And obviously Monster.com is still around, but um, LinkedIn today is the platform for uh, us to find our next opportunity. And that's really how it started, right? Uh, so that, uh, to help job seekers. But over time, the platform has evolved to where it is a place where you can um, build your professional brand, you can um, uh, uh, network. Uh, if you are a, uh, a business professional that maybe isn't looking for an opportunity, it is really a place where you can, um, grow your influence. And uh, obviously, if you're in sales, particularly business to business sales, that's also a platform, uh, LinkedIn, where you can be on. So it really has expanded over the years uh, of what LinkedIn is all about. But, um, you know, as it relates today in terms of um, uh, using it to find uh, uh, job opportunities, what I tell people is, is that Get on your LinkedIn profile, start working it and um, and, and uh, building it out because nine, the statistics say that roughly about 94 percent, 93, 94 percent of recruiters use LinkedIn, yet roughly about 36 percent of candidates are on LinkedIn. Now, I'm sure over the last six weeks that number has gone way up, but still, um, 
it, it is a place uh, for us to, to be finding and looking for our next opportunity. Now, one of the things, you know, and, and uh, for those of you that are logged on and later on going to see is I, my approach, I, I take a really different approach in terms of using LinkedIn. The approach that I take is I teach people how to market themselves versus begging a company to hire them. And what do I mean by that? I want you to think back senior year in high school. We all had that you know, friend or someone we knew senior year that was really good in sports. And typically colleges, universities were looking to recruit that uh, student athlete because obviously they're really good in sports and I'm sure they're probably super brainiac, right? Really smart. And, um, and you know, people say, well, of course, Oscar, you know, for the reasons that you just said, they're good in sports, you know, really smart, you know, high GPA. And I'm like, okay, that's true. But let me ask you this. When you are applying for a job, are you not telling that employer that you are the best candidate compared to everyone else? I mean, of course. I mean, we are. Then why isn't that company coming to you and trying to recruit you? And the reason is because a lot of us don't know how to market ourselves. And going back to LinkedIn, um, it is a place for us to be creating uh, and establishing that professional brand uh, to help attract those opportunities today. But, um, you know, one, one of the things that, uh, in fact, I don't know if you, do you want me to share my screen? I actually have my LinkedIn profile. I can walk some people through some of some key things that people could be doing. Uh, Albert? Yeah, that, walk, through your, walk through your usual presentation. Work your magic. Okay. Let me uh, just switch here a little bit. Because um, I, I actually, I'm going to do it a little bit different here, uh, folks, today for you. I'm actually going to do some live stuff. So here's the thing. Okay, I'm going to walk you through some of the basics in terms of your LinkedIn profile. Um, obviously, we're looking, you can see my screen, correct? Yes? Yes. Okay, so one of the things here with your LinkedIn profile is uh, in the foundation to position yourself so that you are attracting opportunities is to um, establish your brand. Now, your brand I'd like to keep things really, really, really simple. Your brand is made up of four main things. Number one is your image, right? And if, if back in the old days, right, if we were watching and looking at each other face-to-face, -face, if this was, you know, face-to-face um, uh, -face interaction, you would be looking at me as I'm looking at you, and we would form a first impression of each other. Well, the same thing is uh, happens online. It's what people find a uh, about us online and when they go to your LinkedIn profile what is that first impression right that you want people to have the second part of your brand is your mission meaning your why why do you do what you do why are, are you looking to apply for a particular job opportunity etc and what I tell people is in this case your why should be what's in it for the company not necessarily your personal why and to give you a distinction between the two whys on a personal level, my why and the reason why I'm here uh, is because I love helping other people dream bigger, I love inspiring them, and I love serving them. But as it relates to you or a company or an opportunity, my why is I empower you so opportunities come to you because that's what's important to you. The third piece of your brand is your values, okay? Every company out there has a, obviously a company culture. If you compare, for example, IBM culture versus Google's culture, they're different, even though both companies are in the tech industry. You and I also have our own values. And one of the things that I think oftentimes we drop the ball when we're applying for opportunities is that we don't match our values with the values of the company. I have made that mistake where I didn't do that. I took on an opportunity and six weeks into it, I quit. I quit the job. I was miserable, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to follow my own advice. And then the last, the fourth piece is your vision. Where are you going? What do you want to accomplish? And can you communicate that to other people uh, out there? So those were things, image, your mission or your why, your values and your vision. Let's take that now into your LinkedIn profile, okay? So right off the top, you see here at your LinkedIn, this, the, the banner across. 
a lot of times people don't have anything there, right? And so if you, for example, are computer science and that's where you're going to be, your brand, uh, brand then should have an image related to your major or your field of study instead of just leaving it like most people do, just that ugly blue, you know, nothing that LinkedIn gives you. Find something. In this case, as you can see my banner, there's my logo and bam, there's my Y right there, front and center, okay? Next, your picture, okay? Um, I'm seeing more and more people have pictures, okay? There's still some people out there that don't have pictures. Can I tell you something like folks, stop cropping pictures, okay? Just because you love the way you look at that birthday party or maybe at that wedding, you know, you know that you attended for your friends and then you crop it. I mean, so many times I see other people's shoulders, you know, or, you know, another person's, you know, hair, you know, kind of in that picture. Nowadays, folks, just with your camera, use the back camera, okay? Like higher resolution picture, okay? And just take, have someone take a picture of you background that matches your color, your skin tone and smile why smiling because when you smile you come across looking friendly the next area is right underneath your name is what linkedin calls your headline okay now um there's a couple ways to go about it uh, you can go kind of a short phrase when uh, i worked at linkedin uh, and i was doing some consulting work for them uh, my title was Community Partnerships Manager, and my headline on LinkedIn said, Building Community Through Public and Private Partnerships. Just a short little phrase, kind of tagline. Um, if you are more going back to kind of the tech industry, accounting, or kind of some of, the, some of these um, fields, industries where you are more um, uh, uh, skills driven, maybe you want to go kind of keyword like I've done here on my profile. I mean, obviously I have my title there, CEO, but afterwards I have introvert turned international speaker, LinkedIn social and social selling training, workforce development, community relations, keywords. Why? Because LinkedIn is a keyword driven uh, platform. And so if anyone's looking for someone that has experience in workforce development, community relations, et cetera, I want the chances of my profile showing up at or near the top to go up. Next, okay, if you're actively looking for work, um, you can change this section. For me, that's not my situation. I've worked obviously for myself, uh, but you can change this section. Instead of saying providing services, you can say open to opportunities and indicate what kind of industries, what type of opportunities, okay? Just makes it more visually um, uh, appealing uh, when someone is looking at your profile to really kind of stands out. The next area that many people kind of blow it here is under your about section. This is the area where it's critical for you to tell your career story. Now, if you are a, a, a young professional that is either going to graduate from college or just been out in the workforce for five or so years, you might think, well, gosh, Oscar, like I don't have a lot of experience. Like, what can I say, et cetera, and so forth. If you're like myself, okay, who's been out in the workforce uh, in the workforce now for almost 30 years, what I hear a lot of concern is, how do I shorten that, Oscar? Like, what do I say? Like, oh my gosh, like, how do I piece it all together? Let me help you out. Number one, talk about your why. I mentioned earlier, you know, what's in it for the other company. Number two, talk about who are you, meaning like, what are some of your personality traits? And then number three, um, you can uh, uh, talk about some, uh, your career journey uh, as well and your vision, okay? And I also encourage you, I'm a fan of the first person, okay? Why? Because when you read something in the first person, I want people to feel like we're literally across the table at whatever Starbucks, you know, back then, okay? And, uh, and, and draw you into uh, my profile. Now. Also, make sure that you are making it relevant to whatever the opportunity or industry that you're applying to. You can see here in my, in my situation, my profile, I lead with, with my why. I start off as, as Chief Empowerment Officer of Aspita Consulting. I empower you so opportunities come to you. And then I go into my personality traits. I'm a possibility thinker, a visionary leader, and a successful social entrepreneur, et cetera, et cetera. I talk about some of my... Uh, positions that I've held, my career journey, et cetera, and so forth. One of the things that I get a lot 
um, that draws people into reaching out to me, maybe connecting with me, is the part up here on the top where I say introvert turned international speaker, because that's part of my brand. See, I could have said speaker, and a lot of people say that in their profile, or in some cases, to say keynote speaker. But my natural personality is an introvert. I know you don't believe it. You're seeing me here kind of move my hands or whatever. Hey, that's the Mexican side of me, okay? Talking with my hands, all right? But here's the thing is, is that just introvert turned international speaker is, an, is, a, is a way to differentiate myself and highlight my brand as it is down in my about section where I am talking about my why, you know, uh, I believe in relationship first, business second, stuff like that, things like that, that people cap, uh uh, I catch their attention. So they're like, whoa, what does this guy mean? And your profile, just like your resume, is meant to create that curiosity. It's meant for people to reach out to you, connect with you, so that you can ultimately lead to a conversation, a dialogue. Um, the next area, LinkedIn has been rolling this out. Not everyone has this section featured. I actually just got this section added here, um, maybe about four, six weeks ago. And what it is, it's, a, it's another area where we uh, can highlight key things, our work, key aspects of who we are, right? And if you had some multimedia under your summary section, what LinkedIn automatically did is they took that multimedia and moved it under the featured section. Um, what's great now though about this is you can link to say, uh, external video links like YouTube, um, any articles that you might have published. Uh, you can upload some PowerPoint presentations. Even if you have a post out there where um, you have, um, you, you, you know, you got a really high engagement, you can actually link it under the, the featured section. And again, it's, it's where you highlight things that you are really proud of as it relates, again, to your brand. Scrolling down further under your work experience, this is another uh, important area as well. Um, what I encourage you to do is, unless you work for you know, these well-known companies, the Googles, the Facebooks, Microsofts of the world, I want you to write one or two sentences describing what your company does. Then after that, talk about your role and responsibilities. Now I'm gonna give you a little insight tip to kind of save you some time. Uh, either ask HR or do a Google search for job descriptions of the position that you currently have and that you've had in the past. Look at how those job descriptions are written, okay? I'm not a professional, I'm not an HR person and knows how to professionally write a job description. And so assuming you've done that work, you can copy some of that wording onto your, this section right here. So like I said, it saves you some time. The other thing that it does is, is that it keeps you, uh, it helps you use relevant terminology. For example, for, for a, a few years back, I, I co-founded a nonprofit and I used to refer myself as co-founder, co-founder, co-founder. And then one day I started reading social entrepreneur, social entrepreneur. I was like, what the heck is a social entrepreneur? I read it. I'm like, oh shoot, that's me. Bam, changed it. Hey, tomorrow they come up with a different word. I'll change it back then, okay? Make myself relevant. The other thing too that I want you to do on your profile is add examples of your work, okay? Listen, it is common sense that on your resume, on your LinkedIn profile, we're all gonna say positive things about ourselves. So for all saying positive things about ourselves, what becomes a differentiator? Examples of your work. This is an area where many of us also blow it, okay? We blow it. it and you can add, again, PowerPoint, uh, links to videos, etc. Now, some people say, well, Oscar, but I don't have anything. Well, then create something. I'll, I'll show you in a little bit some examples of some posts and things that I've done, okay? But even here, if you look at these three things that I have here, I actually made two of these three videos. The other one, someone recorded, and I just kind of edited it, but I added this as an example, uh, of, of my uh, of my work, okay. Um, some of the one of the questions that I sometimes get to from uh, professionals that have been out in the workforce for say maybe you know twenty plus years, they ask, well, how far back should I need, should I go, Oscar, um, on my profile? Typically, I would say about 
15 years back work experience on your profile, even on your resume. Okay. Now, of course, if you've been working at this same company for 13 years and then you worked at, you know, three other companies for it, you might want to include, go a little further back. Okay. Otherwise it's going to seem like you only had one job, one company or whatever. Okay. But, um, that's another thing, uh, to, uh, to add next, um, any, uh, with regards to your education, uh, any relevant courses that are, re that are related to the type of work that you do or the industry that you want to go into, uh, make sure that you also highlight that co coursework. Um, accounting, you know, if you're taking certain uh, accounting classes, you can highlight uh, that under your education just to make it easier for that recruiter, that hire manager, or whoever's looking at your profile to realize like, okay, Oscar has this experience, okay, he's taking this course. If you've done any volunteer work, list it as well here. And don't just list the name of the organization that you've done volunteer work. Write a little blurb, okay, about them, what it is that you do. Um, depending on the company, some companies, like for example, I know like when I worked at LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a huge um, proponent of encouraging employees to do some uh, volunteer work. Uh, and that could be part of the company culture. So if they see your volunteer work, that could be kind of another area that's you know that kind of that that connection uh there um your skills okay this is uh an area where sometimes uh we we don't pay much attention to but um you can add up to 50 different skills what i encourage you to do is to sort this the the top five skills that you have as it relates to that opportunity and move those to the to the top Okay, because you can sort this in, in any uh, any um, criteria that, that you want. Also, okay, if you have less than 20 endorsements for those top skills, I want you to reach out to your network and ask them to endorse you. Now, be a giver, not a taker. What does that mean? You endorse other people for their skills. They'll get notified, and then typically people will respond back and um, uh, and and. Uh, and, and endorse you as well. Now, LinkedIn over the last kind of year, two years, I've kind of changed the skills endorsement. You can see right now it says take skill test, right? There are certain skills right now, it's mostly kind of the technical skills where if you say you have a certain skill, LinkedIn has a short little quiz that they walk you through just to kind of assess your, your skill level as well. But when someone endorses you for a skill, they are oftentimes asked certain questions as well. Um, but anyways, definitely get uh, people to endorse you for the skills. See, the, the reason too why I say that is because think about it, right? Like you tell me you know how to code in C++ and I go and look at your skill sets. I'm literally like skimming and you don't even have that listed. I mean, it tells me one of two things. Either A, you're not active on LinkedIn or B, you suck at it and you're just, you know, trying to feed me some BS that you are good at, uh, at doing that. Okay. Recommendations. This is another area that's, uh, that's also uh, important too as well. Um, try to at least have 10 recommendations, okay? Uh, and especially right now, I mean, at least half of those, make sure that you've gotten them over the last six months, you know, kind of fairly new. Um, when someone, you have to be connected with that person in order for them to write your recommendation. And same thing with the enforcement of the skill. But when, when someone, writes your recommendation you have three options number one uh accept the recommendation and it goes to your profile number two you can uh ask them to make some changes tell them what those changes are and number three you can flat out reject the recommendation so you have total control as to what goes on here um, on your profile now when you ask someone for a recommendation um i encourage people to um to get recommendations that paints kind of a holistic picture of you, not just one particular area. I mean, if you do some volunteer work, hey, you can ask the executive director of that nonprofit, right? Hey, you know, Mary, you know, could you write me a, uh, would you mind writing a recommendation uh, about, uh, um, you know, my fundraising ability here, the fundraiser that I helped out with, you know, something like that, okay? Typically, they're very short, you know, a paragraph or less, okay? But um, this is another area too, uh, as well. Um, 
The other areas on your LinkedIn profile is you can list also accomplishments, any awards, honors that you receive. If you, uh, those of you that, you know, maybe um, in school, right? You probably worked on some group projects. Um, list what those projects are, okay? Give a little description about it. You can upload maybe your PowerPoint presentation to that project. You can even tag other people that worked with you on that project. This is a, an area where if you don't have that experience, you can highlight what it, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the type of work that you've done uh, in the past. Obviously, if you speak multiple languages, you can indicate what your level of proficiency. In my case, for example, last year I started traveling internationally to Latin America. They asked me, uh, hey, Oscar, uh, do you need a translator? I'm like, no, in fact, English is my second language, okay? So I'm like, and I'm bicultural, okay? By the way, I just don't speak Spanish, but I can understand the culture, all the nuances, okay? So listen at it, you know, your level of fluency here on, on LinkedIn is important. And then lastly, any organizations, like professional organizations that you might be a part of uh, as well, you can also search on these organizations on, uh, on LinkedIn. But um, yes. Um, Albert, let me pause for a second. Uh, I think I see some questions coming in. I don't know how you want to handle those. If you want to ask me some questions now, questions now, or I can kind of keep going. You let me know. Yeah, uh, no questions at the moment, but um, if there's time at the end, would you be interested in reviewing some LinkedIn profiles Absolutely. on camera? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, we have yeah. we have uh, three volunteers right now. So okay, no, I'd be happy. To, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. Um, let me uh, let me share uh, a profile here that uh, of Angelica. This is for if, if there's any of you out there that are um, again about to graduate or you know uh, early in your career or again if you're looking to transition careers and you might have uh, you might not have that experience yet. Um, first of all, Angelica. Uh, is looking to be a um, uh, uh, ethnic studies uh, professor, okay? And uh, in her about section, she says, I am a master's student at San Jose State University who aspires to one day become a professor of ethnic studies. My goal as a future educator is to help create an engaging, creative, and strong educational foundation for future generations. My passion for education has been an ongoing cause that has led me to volunteer for organizations such as Mesa de la Comunidad and Aspira. By pursuing my passion for academia, I hope to expand my horizons and gain more insight into a world of limitless possibilities. I love sharing her about section here, her profile, because this is an example of what I meant earlier of knowing how to sell your vision. She obviously has no experience being a college professor. That's what she wants to do. And she does a really nice job, very concise, of talking about who she is, her why, and you know what she wants to do in the future. Connect with her. She can give you some tips as well on how to write your about section when you have no experience. But I love showing this because it applies, like I said, whether you're a, a young professional just starting off uh, in, in the, your career or you're looking to transition into a new career, she does a really nice job uh, here, okay? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Next, what I want to talk about is uh, who, uh, you know, about uh, networking, okay? First off, folks, um, don't ask me why this is, because I, I don't have, uh, I don't know the answer, okay? But, but LinkedIn starts treating you more as a serious um, user on the platform once you have 500 or more connections. Okay, 500 or more connections. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, Oscar, but like professionals, like how do I know? Like, I don't know that many people. Listen, you're the same person that on your Facebook account has 3,000 people, okay? Like, do the math, okay? Here's what you can do, is you can connect your Gmail account, your Yahoo account, your Hotmail account. You can connect your email account to LinkedIn and uh, LinkedIn watches through the, the, the steps to send those people an invitation to connect on LinkedIn. If you do that, one little caveat, something that I didn't do, it's a lesson that I learned, is uncheck any boxes, any people that you don't want to connect on LinkedIn, and then hit send. That was a way that I was able to initially 
add several hundred people. I think it was like close to 300 people that I added uh, to my LinkedIn, okay? Now, the other thing too is, is that um, connect with people that are, you know, maybe coworkers, past bosses, um, alumni, you know, from your college, universities, okay, that you can uh, connect with, uh, people that are in the same, in uh, same industry that you're in. Um, I, I really look at it as, you know, that ABC, always be connecting. Now, let me tell you, because I do use some parameters. I'm not one of those that I just openly connect to uh, whomever. Uh, and I'm also not the other, on the other end of the spectrum that I only connect with people that I know. No, the criteria that I use, and you're welcome to use this, is number one, um, can I help you? Can you help me? Can we add value to each other? Number two, do we have any mutual connections? And if the answer is yes, who are those mutual connections? I mean, I know Albert, I trust Albert. I know Albert is not gonna be connected to some knucklehead, okay, out there. So if you're connected to Albert and some other folks, you know, that I respect, I'm like, okay, all right, okay, check that box too. And then the next criteria that I use is where are you located geographically? Uh, I'm not looking to right now, nothing against, you know, these places, but I'm not looking to do business in Egypt. Saudi Arabia, okay? So, no, I'm probably not gonna connect with you, okay, if you're uh, over there in those countries, all right? So th that's the, the, uh, the criteria uh, that I use. The next area, folks, is, is that um, personalize your invitations to connect. When you go to someone's profile, okay? Um, let me see, I just connected, oh, let's just, I don't know, let's just pick this person here. Okay, I'm not connected to this person. Obviously, you see at number two, we have mutual connections. But if I go on his desktop profile, which is what I always like to do, is and I click connect, I'm gonna see this window here and it's gonna give me the option to personalize the message. Please personalize it, folks, okay? It just, I mean, you you want if it was a traditional networking event where we're meeting, you know, having cocktails, you wouldn't just go up to me and shove your business front in my face and not even say, hi, I'm, you know, so-and-so. I mean, right? But yet on LinkedIn, many of us, that's what we do. We just hit that little plus symbol, boom, you know, off goes the invitation, okay? Personalize it. What do you say? You know what? Try to find something in common. If there isn't something in common, let's say, like, for example, right now, I, I mean, if you were gonna send an invitation uh, to me to connect on LinkedIn, obviously let me know, hey, you know what? I saw you on, you know, Albert's, you know, uh, webinar, you know, Facebook Live event. Uh, we'd love to connect with you. I, and yeah, at least you kind of put me and yourself, you know, together here where it is that we met. Um, you know what? Another, another thing that you can do, and I'll tell you this because, um, you know, you can do this, but, you see people that are logged in right now onto this webinar and you see their names. You know what I would do? This is another way to network. I would be looking at people's name, uh, profile on LinkedIn, just take their name. Before we got on live onto this webinar, Akash was helping out Albert with some technical stuff and I looked up Akash on LinkedIn. You can do that right now. Maybe, you know, oh my gosh, I didn't realize Akash works at you know, he actually works at Zoom, okay? But I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to get my foot in the door. Hey, Akash, you know what? We were both on this webinar with Albert. Uh, I see you work at Zoom. I welcome the opportunity to connect with you on LinkedIn. Something simple as that. You don't need to tell your whole story or anything, but that's also an example of knowing how to network as well. And I tell you, I'll tell you what, as an introvert, I love finding some common ground versus like cold turkey coming up to someone. I mean, I can do it now, but that's not, that's my least favorite way of connecting uh, with people. Um, lastly, what I'll do, and then uh, we'll do some, uh, I'll do a, some uh, reviews of some profiles is what I want to talk about is um, getting active on LinkedIn folks. Many of you treat LinkedIn like a gym membership. Yeah, I said that right. Gym membership, right? Remember? End of, end of last year, New Year's resolution. I'm gonna wanna, you know, I wanna get fit, and then you go and get a gym membership, and then you only show up until you know February 22nd, you know, and that's it. And that's what happens too. People set up a LinkedIn account because maybe someone told them, or maybe they were looking for a job and they got a job, and then they stopped showing up to the LinkedIn gym. Don't do that, okay? Some things that you can do to share content, and uh, and before I tell you some things. Here's the reason why, one of the reasons why to be active on LinkedIn is, like I mentioned earlier, it's about 
continuing to build and enhance your professional brand. Also, you become top of mind, right? When people think of like Facebook or some of these other platforms, when you are skimming through your feed and you see so-and-so name or whatever, it's because A, you engage with them, but also because they're active on the platform and, it be, and you become top of mind. I want to be top of mind because when someone is looking for a LinkedIn speaker or someone is, because I also do consulting work, is, is looking for someone that does work in community relations, workforce development, et cetera, I want to be top of mind uh, with, with, that, uh, with that person. So therefore, my activity helps uh, uh, in that way. And then lastly, it's, it's just a way of adding value and helping other people. So let me show you some examples of some um, content uh, that you can share. Uh, so you can, uh, you can create graphics. I use an app um, called Adobe Spark Post. Uh, Canva, okay, but here's here's a post that I did this coming Friday. I'm doing this webinar, uh, and I just created that and I shared it uh, on LinkedIn with the link to the uh, to register, okay. Um, short little videos. Here's a little video that that uh, that I took from a webinar. It's actually Angelica talking about her about section, and uh, I, uh, I I uh, I just literally took it from Zoom, okay. Um, edited on my phone, like 99% of the content that I create is on my phone um, and shared it on LinkedIn as a tip, okay? Um, here's another video, okay, that I created. I love creating videos. Here's a picture, okay? Uh, that's my mom and that's me, right? I just put this, this quote here. Um, one, of the, one of the types of contents that I enjoy sharing a lot is is relating some of my personal struggles, challenges that I've, that I've been through throughout my life and use that as a life lesson to share it. It does take some courage to do that because you're being kind of vulnerable, right? Um, but it's interesting that when I share stuff like this, I get a lot more engagement and more relatability. And some people might think, well, Oscar, but what does that have to do with LinkedIn training? Uh, nothing. What it has to do is what I just said, relatability to people, okay? Because you got to remember, folks, I don't care if it's a recruiter, hire manager, or whatever. At the end of the day, it's human-to-human -human interaction. People need to like you, right? And so, and relate to you. And so, this is uh, examples uh, of what I share. Listen, many of you, I bet you if I go onto your Facebook account or your Instagram account, right, you're showing pictures of, you know, your, your, your dog or your cat or, you know, you exercising at home or whatever. And you know, you have the skill sets to create the content. But when it comes to LinkedIn, you like totally freeze. And like, oh, what can I do? What can I post? Guys, just share your heart. Okay. So these are just some examples of some, some content that, uh, that you can share. But um, Albert. Let's do it. Who's? Uh, let me uh, pause here and, and uh, pull up a uh, uh, some profiles here uh, of someone. Sounds good. Um, yeah. So let's see here. Um, we have a couple a couple of these. Let's go with first come first serve. Um, Bargov's LinkedIn. Uh, okay. What's the name of the person? Um, I don't know what the last name is, but their URL ends with B H A R G A V two four seven. Okay, let me see if I can. Uh, is it on the? Um, oh, it here it's on the. Uh, uh, I see it. Let me let me see if I can uh, copy it here. Um, let's see. Uh, give me one second here. Hold on. And this is awesome. We still have people joining us, so it's great. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can. Uh... Okay, I think I pulled it up. All right. So, um, okay, obviously, I'm going to make some assumptions here um, it, it, so that I get it. So, and the assumption is, is that this person, um, the position that they're looking for is to be in tech related to software test engineer, okay? So first off, 
remember your brand. Okay, so if you're a software test engineer, that's what you want to do. Um, have a background image that's related to your industry. Okay, um, so that you know you're guilty as charged here. When I look at your profile, you're telling me software test engineer, and I see a picture. You know, I don't know some testing or something. Um, next, add uh, a picture of yourself. Now, maybe you do have a picture uh, because we're not connected. Uh, um, I. You know, maybe your setting is set up to where you are blocking people from seeing your photo. If I was you and you're actively in the market for a job, for an opportunity, let people see your photo, okay? Because more and more folks, what's happening is when, when um, people see, don't see pictures, they kind of wonder, is this an, a, a fake profile, not a fake profile? What's going on? What, why is this person hiding their, 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 their face? Next. Your name, uh, I would, I, I mean, unless that it, your last name is just J, okay, but that's, I don't think so. You know, just write out your full name, okay? Under your, um, your, uh, your name, I would encourage you to add uh, some other keywords. Remember I mentioned earlier, like some, the example that I used uh, about myself. So not just software test engineer, because that's your title, your job title, but tell me, what kind of industries you're in. I don't know, are you in the semiconductor industry? Are you in, you know, whatever, you know, automobile um, industry, autonomous vehicle? What industries, you know, are you in? Come up with anywhere from three to no more than five keywords and add them under uh, right here, your, your headline. Um, next, under your about section, okay? The way it's written right now, I have a feeling that what you did is you took what's on your resume and just plopped it up here. Remember, you are telling a story. You got to treat LinkedIn, this about section, make people feel like you are standing or sitting right across the table from them. This is not how you speak. If you, if we were sitting across the table and I asked Bahar, so t uh, oh, excuse me, Bargar, uh, tell me about yourself. And, you're, and you started talking to me Five plus years experience in software development, software testing, focusing on requirement, experience. In it. I'd be like, dude, you're, I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't tell you this, okay? So I'm not like this, right? But I'd be, in my mind, I'm like, dude, you're weird. Like, why can't you just talk normal? So re rephrase it here, okay? Um, uh, as well. Next, in your section, uh, your about section where you have your skills, take those skills and, and if you haven't done so, add them down here. Um, uh, let me see. Yeah, down here. Okay, I don't have time right now to go to see if they're up, but but uh, if they are down here, awesome. Don't waste the time to put them up here. Okay, uh, in this uh, uh, section. Again, this is an area where I other people say, yeah, no, go ahead and put it up in your about section. I'm telling you, LinkedIn, just like your resume, is not going to get you hired. It's going to get your foot in the door, and you're dealing with a human being. So add some personality to it, make it personable, all right? Um, the other thing is, is that add some examples of your work and also one or two sentences describing what this company does. I like, I have no idea what this company does, right? One or two sentences of what the company does and then write, you can include some bullet points like you have here, um, but also maybe, uh, you know, a couple of sentences um, describing what it is that, that you do. And then again, like I said, examples of your work. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. So those those are some things that that I would encourage you uh, to to add uh, as well. Uh, remember too, if you are actively looking to turn on that feature where it says you know open to opportunities within your profile and indicate what what uh, industries and in, that you might be interested in. All right. Okay. Do we have another one? Uh, Albert, we do go to linkedin.com slash in slash Torres, T-O-R-R-E-S, Janet, J-A-N-N-E-T. Okay, let me see if I can, it uh, might be a little easier here. Uh, is it on the, um, on the chat? It is, yep. Oh, it I is. see it, I see it, okay. Uh, yeah. All right, let's do this here.
Janet, all right. Okay, Janet, let's take a look here. Legal assistant expert interested in project management and emerging tech. Okay, uh, so same thing you heard me mention about your background, uh, interested in project management, emerging tech. Um, I, okay, so background image. Um, I like your photo. What I would encourage you, Janet, is uh, focus more on the headshot. Okay, you have a beautiful smile, beautiful photo, and just focus more kind of on, on the uh, the headshot. Just minor changes there. Next, uh, again, under your um, your headline is it sounds like you are looking to make a career transition, and so. What I would encourage you to do then is if you are looking to make that career transition is list the position that you might be interested in and then also some skills that you have related to that new industry that you want to go into that new position. Um, I wouldn't indicate this interested in project management emerging and let me tell you why. Um, I, the, this, this, the, the approach that I take is that remember I said about attracting opportunities. I I want to tell you what it is that I bring to the party. What are my skill sets? The value that I bring. Um, I don't need to tell you what I'm interested in because by me telling you what my skill sets are and then doing the things that I mentioned earlier, right? Complete profile, your brand, your activity. You're gonna. I'm gonna show you proof of what it is that I do. Okay. So so. In this case, just add again some of those keywords related to whatever position or industries that you're looking to uh, get into. Um, next, it, uh, if you haven't done this, try to see if this law office uh, of John Hill has a company page on LinkedIn with a company logo. If they do, then make sure you select that company profile page so that it doesn't sh continue to show kind of this ugly grade, you know, that LinkedIn has. If that's not the case, then don't worry about it. You can't do anything. Okay. But um, let me see here. Uh, own the litigation roadmap. Yes. So see what I want you to do here is I want you to, again, add one or two sentences describing what, what, what type of law firm is it? Okay. And then yes, you can get into telling me, you know, what your, your role and responsibilities uh, were. I love how you quantify some of this stuff here, okay? That is that is really good. Um, yep, you got some Spanish, yep, translation and so forth. Now, um, what, uh, remember too what I've, been, uh, I've said before, add some examples of your work uh, as well, you know, multimedia, some, um, you know, I don't know if there's some video of you giving a presentation, a talk or something, obviously, without viola violating any client, you know, confidentiality or um, non-disclosure agreements and so forth. But I would do that as well. And I would do the same thing, try to fill out as much as you can, you know, on these other uh, work experience uh, profiles as well. Uh, all right, oh, you went to Cal, all right, go Bears. I went to Cal too. Ah, and Unam, there we go, awesome. Um, the other thing that I would encourage you on your profile, uh, Janet, is my friend, you need to get active because I can tell right off the bat because see, if you were active, I would be able to click somewhere here to show me your activity. And this is what I mean. Like, you know, you're, you're, you're treating LinkedIn like, like it's an online placeholder for your quote unquote resume. You got to get out there uh, and, and get active, okay? You need to let people know how much of a badass you are. Like, quit keeping it a secret, girl, okay? All right. Um, who else do we have, Albert? Let's see. Um, we're just going in order here. So, um, Kathy Graham. Kathy D. Graham. K-A-T-H-Y-D. And then Graham like Graham Cracker. Okay, I see it here. Let's, let's do it. Cool. Okay. Um, we'll try and get through as many as we can before the top of the hour. Okay. All right. Technical project management, MS, health, informatics, healthcare. Okay. So I like your picture, Kathy. Yes, you have that background image. So again, 
you know, I look at this background image and, I, you know, for me, I mean, as I'm looking at it, 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 it doesn't seem to correlate with your background experience, with your brand, okay? Um, one of the things that I tell people is like, listen, I believe in taking care of the environment. I believe we shouldn't be using straws because they're killing the poor turtles, but you will never see me like, comment, or reshare a post about that because that is not my brand. I stay in my lane with my brand. And so just looking at this background image, um, I mean, it's beautiful, and it leads me to believe that are you are like an, an environmentalist or what? Because that's what comes to my mind. And if and the answer is yes, then great, leave it there. Okay. Next, uh, I love how you do have. Uh, you know, this is exactly the, your headline. This is what I mean in terms of uh, having uh, uh, some particular skill sets or industry specific words. The only thing that I would say about this, uh, Kathy, is is that. Um, if you are looking for employment, right, or, or transition careers, look at three to five job descriptions, circle the, 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 the predominant skill sets in those three uh, to five job descriptions and see if there's some common skills across the board that you see in those three to five job descriptions. And if the answer is yes, and you have those skill sets, then make sure you have them up here under your headline, okay? Um, all right, write it in, okay, your about section. Remember, um, I'm a fan of first person. Kathy has a passion for improving the current state of healthcare. She is also experienced in software professional who recently, okay, who recently completed a graduate degree in health, okay, San Francisco, okay. So, okay, so you have, Kathy, the ingredients here for a very strong about section. What we need to do is we need to cook up a new meal, okay, a different meal. And remember uh, the three things that I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, why do you do what you do? Who are you? You know, what's your career journey and your vision? See if you can take everything that you written here into a more concise paragraph, certainly no more than two paragraphs. And when I say a paragraph to two, I'm not talking about like this long, okay? Like, all right, be, be concise, okay, uh, on this. Um, oh, I see right here another thing that I would advise, uh, Kathy, is connect to more people. You have roughly about 300 or so connections, okay? Connect with more people. Um, let me see under your um, activity what it is that you are posting and how frequently. So, okay, I would recommend the whole series. Okay, how events? Okay, all right, healthcare. Okay, you got some things there. Okay, so you got some healthcare. So, okay, folks, listen, as far as activity, okay, first of all, of all the social media platforms, LinkedIn is the one where you actually need to be, be the, le the least active uh, if you really want to get engagement. If you're like on Twitter, you need to at least be tweeting at least seven to 10 times a day, okay, um, to, in order to kind of get some kind of traction just because of the way the platform is set up. Is set up. On LinkedIn, one post a day or one like or a comment, you're, you're good to go. But even then, once a day is a lot for many of you. So at least try to do, start off with maybe once or twice a week, either liking, commenting, or sharing a post. And eventually you can work yourself up to it because again, what's gonna happen is LinkedIn is gonna see you as a more active participant, you know, the, the algorithm and you're gonna get more engagement. Cause see, you're only getting two people like in this particular post that's liking it, et cetera, and so forth, okay? So that, that's a, another thing that I, that I would recommend, uh, Kathy, for you. Lastly, you know, with your work experience, again, you know, one or two sentences. I know what Agilent does, okay? I've been around long enough, okay? So I know what it does, but one or two sentences describing what the company does, and then uh, elaborate a little more about what it is that you've done, and again, add some examples of, of your work, okay? All right, let me see. Do you want me to you, uh, Angel Cruzado? Is that okay, Albert? Sure, let's see who the next one is. I just wanna make sure we're going in order. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, let's do Angel's next. Okay. All right. Let me know how many you want to do. We're we're hitting up on the top of the hour here, yeah. so I want to no, be mindful of everyone's time. That's, that's fine. Like I said, I'm I'm uh, 
I'm not, not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, okay. Head of Human Resources with Turnaround Integration Acquisition Experience. Okay. Um, let's see here. Founder and CEO, HR On Demand, Freelance. Okay. I like that you have so many mutual connections with some of these. <laughs> I know. I know. It's true. So, hey, yo, I love your picture. See, guys, those of you that are on there, this is a great, this is an example right here. See, you look at my homeboy here, Angel, and you look at his picture, and the dude's smiling, right? Like, he seems like, oh, man, he's kind of a cool guy. Like, you know what? All right. I talked to him or whatever. Great picture. Um, I like your background image. The only thing is that I'm not sure. Oh, I see. Rogue Games, head of human. Okay. No, no, no. I get you. Okay. I get you. I see where the connection is. So, you guys, here's a great example, too, uh, of Angel using a nice background with his logo, et cetera, and so forth. He's got it there. See? Branding. He's got it. Okay? Right there. Things are, are connecting. Okay? Uh, head of Human Resources with Turnaround Integration Acquisition Experience. So, uh, Angel, the, the here um, on your headline, just to make it easier on the eye is, I forget what they're called, but those little bars, you see it on my, on my profile, just kind of put those little, you know, spacers, bars, just to make it easier on the eye. So you can have, um, you know, human re head of human resources. You know, maybe for you, think about this, Angel, when you say head of human resources, um, you might maybe think about coming up with, I don't know, um, you know, VP of HR or, uh, or I don't know, chief HR or something like that, that, that is more, especially you, this is your own business, your own company, dude. I mean, like, don't diminish who you are and the value, like, right. Like in my case, I mean, it's my own company CEO. In this case, I've gone chief uh, empowerment officer, but dude, I could call myself booger picker or whatever the heck. And, but in this case, it's LinkedIn. So like, you gotta like up the terminology that you refer to yourself. That's, so I, that's just one of the things that I would encourage. The last thing with your headline is if these are the correct words in, in, or excuse me, areas of expertise or disciplines that you um, focus on in the type of work that you do, then you're good to go. All right. You're golden. Um, let me see human resource business leader that can develop and deliver global. Um, okay. Ability to perform. Okay. So kind of similar to, you know, you're kind of on the right track, uh, Angel, with your about section. But um, I want you, word, avoid some words like proven, uh, you know, team player, some of these overused words, because proven doesn't really mean anything, okay? And it's so overused. So <clears throat> what I want you to do is rewrite your about section where you are telling me, how, again, how much of a badass you are. Like, you know, I work in, in, in this, these industries, I've worked on these projects, or I save this amount of money, or I reduce um, um, uh, turnover by X amount, uh, et cetera, uh, and so forth. And, um, and you can take some of the key words that you have, because I see, you know, organization development, performance and management, workforce planning, those are all key words related to your industry and the type of work, but just kind of rewrite it where you are telling me your career journey, but also elevating yourself and being a little more specific as to how amazing uh, it is uh, that, that you are. Um, you have a, quite a bit of, uh, of, of people that you're connected with, um, I, Angel. Let me just look at your posts here. Uh, I'm curious, okay, all right. Uh, never in a world history would compare. Okay, material. Yep. Yeah. All right. I don't know. It sounds like a family. It looks like a fan. My birthday on Friday. Okay. Um, HR on demand. Okay. So, Angel. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, buddy. Like, here's the thing. Okay, you have a ton. Uh, almost four thousand people, followers, connections, and for the amount of the size of your network that you have you're not getting very much engagement and it could be a combination that you just need to be more consistent. Okay. With your post, it can also be too that um, maybe what you're posting 
isn't resonating with your audience. And so you have to think about what is your brand and who is my audience, my network, right? And if, if there's a disconnect, maybe you need to unfollow or whatever certain people and add more people that, that related to your brand, or maybe, maybe it, the, the connections are part of your brand, but the content that you're sharing just quite isn't resonating. And so change it up because at the end, it's about engagement. You got to build that community um, on the social media uh, platforms. Okay. So those are some things that I, I would recommend. All right. Take a look. Um, we'll do one more here. Um, do you want me to go? Let me see. Uh, Krishna? Epiphany? Um, I don't know if Krishna is still on the video. Why don't we do the next one? I think Colette is still here. Let's do okay. Colette's. Colette yeah, Becker. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you are here. Oh, never mind. Okay, let's do Krishna and Colette's. <laughs> okay. I don't want to be putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So we'll do it and Colette. Okay. So here we go. All right. Krishna, so let me see, enabling excellence. Let me just look at your management consultants, right? Epiphany. Okay. So, so Krishna, um, on your headline, you know, it, it, I think for you, you might be able to go either way. You can go like a short little phrase, uh, kind of a tagline. Like, remember I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you were on the call or earlier, but when I worked at LinkedIn, um, my title was community partnerships manager, but my headline said building community through public and private partnerships. So you can go that way with a short little tagline here or go keyword, kind of like what I've been uh, talking about. Um, this is a nice picture uh, that you have, but um, again, if it's related to your brand in terms of advisor to Silicon Valley Atlanta startups, maybe what you want to do is, I don't know, maybe have a background image here of Silicon Valley, or you can split between, you know, kind of edit a collage of Silicon Valley and London, you know, type of thing, or, or some tech companies up here. Uh, okay, your about section, a versatile high performance leader with over 10 years of consulting experience and strategy business, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I mean, this is, this is good. I see you've got some results. So, Again, in, in your about section, make it a little more, um, that, like I said, that first person, that kind of more engaging. It's, it's, it's just, just pretend you and I are meeting for the first time and I ask you that question. So, Christian, tell me about yourself. And you're going to tell me part of your career story, right? That's how I want you to write it here. You can use some of these keywords, some of these metrics, you know, these numbers uh, that you have, uh, things that you've accomplished in different companies. This is amazing. I mean, it's great work. Just rewrite it, reword it um, uh, a little differently here. Uh, with regards to your activity, um, let me take a look here. Uh, yeah, so obviously, last time you showed up to the LinkedIn gym was over a year ago, Krishna. Okay, like we need to show up again. All right. Um, yeah, you need to you need to um, get active uh, on sharing content, and, and I, I I want you to think of it too of being active is because you have a lot to offer to people. I mean, you're you're amazing, you know. And and so help other people share some of your expertise, some of your knowledge, because that's going to also come back around, right? People are going to see you as that leader online, right? Um, I mean, Albert and I, I mean. It's been, I don't know, several months since we last talked, but we're connected on social media. And so when he posts some stuff or I post stuff, like that's how we stay abreast. Because if I didn't post anything, he'd be wondering like, oh, I wonder what Oscar is up to, right? And so people are kind of like wondering like, what's Krishna been up to, uh, you know, uh, over the last year? So definitely get active um, on, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, again, remember one, uh, one or two sentences describing what your company does, but also if you've been in this role, I expect for you to tell people, to tell me what it is that you do at the company, you know? Yeah, management consulting, but give me some specifics, okay? Um, uh, hey, Oscar, sorry. Um, yeah. I'm coming back from a, a long family gap, and I kind of embellished it by saying startup advisor, which I've done. 
Yes. Uh, that's my challenge. So what would you suggest for that? Ah, okay, okay. So you, so you, you haven't been working for, or when was the last time uh, that you worked? Was it in 2015? Yes. Okay. And I went off to law school for a year and came back. And ever since I came back, I've been... Got you. Okay. And during the time that you've been um, off work, have you done any, whether it's volunteer work or, or done any, you know, side projects or advising or anything like that? Nothing significant or relevant. Okay, I've wait. Hold on. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I didn't ask if it was significant. My question was, have you done anything? Yeah, I've been doing part-time work. Okay. So what I want you to do then, because here's the thing. Is, is that what is significant is re uh, uh, relative. What you need to do is you need to um, take some of that, those projects that you worked on, right, or some of the work that you've done and use some of the current terminology, all right, um, of what is being used today, maybe in a job description, so that you can include it under your experience here. Okay? I was doing Google Lyft, Oscar. Nothing really useful. But when, okay, like Google Lyft, I mean, are you not interacting with clients? Ride sharing driver. Right, but are you not inter 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 interjecting with clients, providing yeah. service? Like, yeah, yeah uh, I mean, there's some drivers that don't have, you know, mints in the back seat or even water. And then some of them, man, they have like the whole, you know, great poupon in the background, in the, in the back seat. You see where I'm going with this? Right, but the perception is that, you know, what is a woman with two MBAs and billion dollar experience doing ride sharing, you know, that, that, that the perception drops right away. No, but you don't have to list that you are, I'm not saying that you have to list that you were an Uber or Lyft driver. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that you learn how to take that customer service experience or, or know, because as a Lyft driver, Uber, you're working for yourself. Right, okay? right. So you have to learn how to reframe, re, uh, restate that business ownership uh, as an entrepreneur to understand the client's need to be able to deliver exceptional service. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going with, with, with this? Right, right. You, Thank you. That's what I'm talking about, okay, of how you can state that uh, here. Because, because here's the thing. You weren't at home watching Oprah eating bonbons, okay? <laughs> Some and of if, the time, but okay. <laughs> yeah, and if, but if you don't state that, you know, what it is that you do, how, how am I supposed to know? How are other people supposed to know that you're a go-getter? Right, right. That's, that's the area where sometimes we, we miss the boat and we think like, oh my gosh, you know, no. I'm going to tell you something. The, yeah, I went to Cal and now that opened doors. But you know what has helped me move, make 11 career transitions, work, go transition from tech to the chamber CEO without zero experience? It was the life lessons that I learned from my parents. Mm. And right. we, we seldom value those type of experiences. And that's what I'm trying to get you to open your eyes, your mind, to realize that I don't give a rip if you were driving Lyft or whatever, because you know what th that tells me too? You, you, you are humble and a go-getter and hungry. And I'd rather hire someone with your attitude than some knucklehead at Google who doesn't even know how to do their own dry cleaning because Google does it all for them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. And, and you know, Krishna, the other thing too is, and this is what I teach other people, like quit kissing a company's rear end, you know, right. begging them to hire you. You need to know your value. And if a company doesn't value what you bring to the party, go find another freaking job company. Yeah, yeah. Love the passion. Love the passion. So, okay, let's look at one more. Uh, here, think, uh, we, um, we'll do. Uh, we'll do Colette's. Um, and so, Oscar, for all the other folks who offered their LinkedIn's or uh, maybe want to reach out to you afterwards, um, how can they get in touch with you? Just, uh, just so we get that out of the way here. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Uh, what happened to my uh, little chat? Or um, oh, hang on. I think it's. Uh, where did the, uh, the chat go here? Uh, here we go. I'm going to give you guys right here um, my uh, contact uh, information. So here's my uh, email. 
Okay. And then obviously you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, there's a website too, as well, that you can connect with me, but, um, Okay, let's uh, let's do. Collect. By the way, you guys, uh, this Friday I'm actually doing a. Um, let me uh, really quickly here so you can see it. But uh, I'm actually doing a uh, a free LinkedIn uh, uh, webinar on five ways to get uh, uh, noticed by recruiters on LinkedIn. And you guys are welcome to sign up uh, for that as well. But let me uh, let me pull. We said that we were going to do collects. Yeah, we're gonna do, uh, we'll, we'll do Colette's. Okay, and then we'll yeah. wrap it up here. Let me and see. And then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, uh, there we go, there's Colette. Okay. And uh, thank you, uh, thank you again for staying on extra time to do this, we really appreciate it. No, you're right, you're, you're, you're welcome, man. I, I told you, man, I, I love what you do. You help a ton of people, uh, Albert, and I, I, I admire that, I appreciate that about you. Okay, so Khaled, here we go. Um, again, you're back at a background image, uh, business, business mentor, operations and analytics. Um, let me see, business mentor, paving event. Okay, self-employed. So <clears throat> Khaled here on, your, on the business mentor, the fact that you've been working for yourself now for almost a year and a half, um, it's okay to, to mention as a business mentor, but I would also include a look, something, a, a title that's, you know, that's more, maybe you can put yourself as founder, principal, or, you know, something like that for, for, for your company. Okay. And then yeah, that's uh, more of a filler. I was trying to get going as a mentor. Um, it's basically bouncing back after five years of owning a, a, a different business where I learned a lot and I wanted to use that knowledge going forward. So that's what, that's more of a sort of filler thing I was trying this year. Okay. Which is fine. That's, that's, that's not, that's not a problem. Um, see, here's the thing where I'm getting is, is that when, um, when I started off my, uh, my company like mm -hmm. five years ago, I started off doing consulting work and then eventually I got into doing training like LinkedIn and so forth. But, um, I saw on LinkedIn and just, you know, networking people uh, call themselves consultant, consultant, consultant. And what I realized is, is that not all consultants are equal. There are some that are only consultants because, you know, whatever, they just for a short period of time and then they move on and nothing wrong with that. But I thought to myself, you know what, I'm never going to call myself a consultant. And hence why I ended up uh, coming up with, um, with chief empowerment officer, CEO and, and founder. Uh, because that carries more weight. And when I share that with people, it also fits in with my brand. So I get where you're coming from, that that's kind of a filler. What I'm saying is I want you to think of some other ways to describe what you do. Even if you called yourself a business coach, that um, is, is more relevant. And I hear that more than business mentor. And it just has kind of just elevates you more, okay, in terms of uh, what you're doing. Um, up here under the uh, your 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 keywords again, as I've said before, think about you know do, uh, are are these skill sets or areas that you want to go into? Mm -hmm. uh, if the answer is yes, I'd also maybe be a little more specific because operations and analytics is a really vague um, words um, can mean a lot of things. It could be you know operations and manufacturing, you know, or analytics of you know like what? Okay. Um, your about section is, uh, let me see, Colette, again, um, like I said before, first person, Colette's a local entrepreneur with a wealth of knowledge to share with business. Colette has experience establishing a brick and mortar service-based business in Carter Crossing County, as well as an owner operator model in the local area. See, I would be a little more concise mm -hmm. and just right off the top in that first two sentences, like you don't need to tell me that you're a local op entrepreneur, like that's, irrelevant you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. but tell me maybe list entrepreneur in what area okay um and then um when you say wealth of knowledge be a little more specific because that's kind of vague right like wealth of knowledge like what is what does that mean you know um i know it means a lot but it's just you know it's not really like quantify it okay a little more Colette has experience establishing a, a brick and mortar service-based business. So like, see, again, be a little more specific. Are you talking about like 
a retail store? Are you talking about, you know, financial services store? Are you talking about, you know, opening up a Jamba Juice? Like what, what kind of brick and mortar business um, <clears throat> have you built? The other thing is, I don't think you need to be that specific about Contra Costa County unless you are looking for a job or you're looking for something okay. specific in that Contra Costa County uh, as well. I don't think that's very relevant uh, as well. Um, take these other areas. See, again, like I've said before, you have the experience, the ingredients here. Take the business experience and all these other experiences and combine them into that one or two paragraphs um, uh, section here. You, you, so you can merge that into the, the earlier part of about? Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, the other thing is, is that add examples of your work. If, you know, it could be photos, it could be maybe, uh, I created a while back a PowerPoint presentation um, uh, to help startups do community outreach when they're beta testing their products. And I share that online, right? Like on LinkedIn. And so think about- Lower down, uh, like articles published. It, exactly. You can take articles that you published. Um, even that article that you publish, you could even turn it into maybe an infographic, just mm -hmm. different ways that you can highlight the experience, your expertise that you have. So that again, it's like, you're telling me, cause see, again, my brain goes, you're telling me you have a wealth of knowledge, but I don't see any evidence of your wealth of knowledge. The, where would you put the infographics and things like oh, that? You can add it. So uh, if you have the feature that, that I mentioned that uh, the feature section on LinkedIn, that's where it would go. It also, you can also add it under your work experience. So like you could add it under here, business mentor. Um, you can add the, uh, the that infographics in this area uh, as well. Any work experience area, okay? Mm -hmm. That you can share, uh, you can add it. Um, the other thing too is if you do have a logo for your business, create a company page on LinkedIn and um, and uh, and then link your company to your company page so that the logo shows up because it's just it's just more again more complete more it's kind of putting like that ribbon on that birthday present that you're going to give someone okay. Um, see, you have here outstanding graduate award. That's awesome. That's great. You know. Uh, information that you have. I would get rid of your high school uh, at this point. That, that's, you know, we're going way back. Um, so um, no, I did not imply anything like that comment. Okay. But um, you know, there's no, no need. You can also remove even the years that you've graduated from, from uh, universities. Um, just go in there, click it. And uh, I think uh, go to the very top where it deselects the years. Uh, you don't need to do that uh, listed. Okay. So those are some things that I would recommend uh, to like. So down below, you'll see the um, the articles and such. Should I be moving that more into the featured now? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, oh yeah, over here. It's really there. Up there. Yeah. You got whole publications area. Yeah, you can leave them here, but you can also add them up there. Okay. Yes, yeah. Yeah, just make it easy for people to to you know find the inf to find mm -hmm. information about how amazing you know you are don't make them dig through it because sure. the truth is we're all lazy you know we just skim <laughs> so make it easier for them absolutely yes mm -hmm. awesome any recommendations also when transitioning sorry when transitioning to um the um from one career to another my husband has to revamp his completely from um from excuse me from EDI which is uh, electronic data interchange yes. to GIS which is graphical information systems after a year of uh, new education yes do you have any uh, suggestions when you've got a 15 year career in one and now you're sort of starting with you know very basic roles but with obviously you're coming into it with far more than someone who's you know 20 years old yeah well several things one the number one thing that i would recommend to your husband is network okay mm -hmm. build your network get people um 
to and, and do some informational interviews so that people get to know him as a person and know his story. That's the key thing to know his story. And also what's going to happen is some of these people in these, in this industry or industries that he's looking to, to get into are going to um, give him uh, some recommendations uh, mm -hmm. of things, you know, to, to do because if he just submits uh, applications online, um, like most people do, um, he is going to be sadly um, disillusioned because he just won't have the uh, the skill sets, right? That these ATS systems, you know, the buzzwords, the keywords, or whatever. And what your husband needs is for someone to give him the opportunity to meet face to face so that he can tell his story, talk about his transferable skills and why he's looking to transition. That's what I recommend. So, awesome. Albert, I'm gonna turn it back to you, my friend. All right. Hello and wonderful. I think uh, I think everyone's uh, got a lot of got a lot out of this tonight. And some people even mentioned that they um, that they uh, <laughs> that they skipped Jeopardy for this too. So that's <laughs> uh, so that's always uh, that's always really really fun to hear. Um, and so uh, and so yeah. I think uh, I think we've definitely got a lot out of this tonight. And so if people want to reach out to you on um on linkedin or your website i believe you've provided both of those pieces of information yes uh and then is your friday webinar that you're also doing will that be recorded yes 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 okay, it will be perfect yes, it will be uh recorded wonderful so, yeah um once that's recorded i guess uh, we can go ahead and post that to the group as well so that people can get all the resources uh that they need um so again, thank you, Oscar. I appreciate your time as always. It's always great to have you, and it's always great to listen to your uh, to your thought leadership um, and to be able to really get your insight and share your insight and impact people during this uh, during this crazy time. And I hope for those of you who watched, uh, you also uh, were able to learn something too and can walk away with some of the tools that you need in order to start with your job search tomorrow. Uh, with the continuation of COVID-19, uh, we invite you to continue, we invite you to join us for some of our webinars as they, as we continue doing this. So on Saturday, we'll be doing our usual resume review, 7 p.m. You can join us and also be involved in it by emailing your resume to albert at ajobslist.com to be a part of it. Uh, we also have another webinar coming up next, uh, next Tuesday with uh, John Beck, the founder of Ursus. That's a company out here in the San Francisco Bay Area in the East Bay that is still hiring. And so we're going to talk to him and see what he's looking for in his candidates and, uh, and how he can help people get to the next level with what they're trying to do in their career. Uh, before then, we'll see you in the community with your success stories, your introductions, your advice posts. And as always, remember, we're going to get through this together. And in the meantime, may luck be in your favor and may peace be on your mind. I'm going to be a good night to everybody, and we'll talk to you all soon. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.